Okay, y'all, so I am back with another video. I'm laughing because I came on here not knowing what I was going to tell y'all today. <laughs> um, I'm going to just be talking to y'all for real. Um, I'll probably tell y'all a little story time after I give y'all the rundown on this client. Ooh, that's a little blurry. I'm so sorry, y'all. I did not even know that. But a little rundown on this client. This was her first appointment with me. She just moved um, to Baltimore maybe like a few months ago i think she was telling me oh excuse me <laughs> and she has not had a trim or a treatment and i think she said about five months since november i think she was telling me i think since november so um with that being said it was definitely time for a trim definitely time for a treatment so what i did i gave her a hydration steam treatment added the swarkov hydrate um deep conditioner and then i added a little bit of the swarkov bonding conditioner so um i did all of that just because she did have a little bit more than normal shedding and that's just probably just because of her split ends and stuff like that but since you notice that usually that's a sign that she need a little bit of protein or whatever so I did that, and now we are getting into her silk press. I'm blow drying. Y'all know I go in. I go in with the comb first just because it gets everything um, nice and straight, a good base to then use the brush with the concentrator attachment, and that's how I get it, like, straight, straight. Um, so we're doing that. Um, her hair was a very nice length. She didn't need much cut off. Um yeah she really didn't need much cut off y'all will see i don't know if i recorded the trim for this one i may have but i'm not sure um but regardless she just got a little bit cut off it wasn't a, it wasn't a whole lot like she didn't have a whole bunch of crazy breakage a whole bunch of crazy split ends just enough so i told her as long as she gets her trim every three to four months she'd be perfectly okay a-okay ready to go um and yeah so that's that um i'll come back in to tell y'all like some other stuff that i want to touch on with her hair if need be but other than that her hair was healthy y'all see the shine um she was getting her hair done regularly before she came to me anyway before she moved so it wasn't really much like craziness to it it wasn't much that like she didn't have any real real issues so that was good but now on to the story so i guess today i'll tell y'all the story of how i got scammed out of 825 dollars y'all there are scammers on the loose um <laughs> so this was last year in 2022 so i had just started offering taping services or whatever like, I had done them before. I knew about them. I already had a vendor for them. But this is when I finally started offering taping services. I finally started offering taping services, y'all. And the girls was not playing. It was around tax time this happened, too. So, it's around tax time this happens. Um, The lady, she booked her appointment the beginning of March. Yeah, she booked her appointment the beginning of March. Her appointment was the end of March. She booked her appointment on March 13th. She paid her appointment in full. This is one of the times where I had the option for you to be able to pay your appointment in full. <laughs> um, I don't have that option anymore, clearly, um, if you look on my booking website. And y'all will see why. So, she pays her appointment in full. So, I'm looking at it. I'm not really paying it no mind. I'm like, okay. She booked her appointment in full. Okay, cool. Um, but she didn't book a consultation. So what I did was, because I noticed that, I was like, okay, she pulled, she booked her appointment in full. I know she probably really wants to um, get her hair done. A lot of people don't read either. So it's like, okay, whatever. So I contact her. I'm like, hey, you booked a tape and install, but you need a, with hair included, because it was $825 at the time. That was what what I charged at the time so I'm like you need a consultation first I said but because you booked your appointment already and I see that you're serious about your appointment I said I can just go ahead and give you your consultation now um so called her facetimed her got pictures of her hair seen her hair on facetime um I wanted her to take a close-up of her edges I looked at her edges I looked at that seen the density of her hair her hair type her hair texture asked her my whole rundown my whole questions or whatever um 
like I would normally do on a regular virtual consultation, right? Okay, so we did that. We did the virtual consultation, and her appointment day comes. Her appointment day comes, and um, she's a little bit quiet. She says that she was pregnant or whatever, and she was like, you know, just going through it a little bit because she was pregnant. So we talked a little bit, laughed, geeked, we watched stuff, um, and then her, the end of her appointment comes. I took content this whole day. Her uh, video did pretty good on my instagram too um it looked amazing her tape and install looked amazing she said she loved it she said it was great now she did look a tad bit sketchy when she walked in just a tad bit she looked a tad bit sketchy but you know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover y'all <laughs> but i'm just saying it was like a mm, okay like after it happened, i'm like okay i could see how she's out here scamming people but she said she loved her hair amazing so i'm thinking great you already paid this is amazing this is great okay like yeah period um did the content i edited it posted it it did well seeing her whatever i asked her she wanted to do her maintenance appointment book her maintenance appointment but she left she was like no because my schedule is kind of like all over the place so when um I figure out my schedule for when I want to come in for the maintenance, then I'll do that or whatever. So I'm like, okay, whatever. No pressure. That's good. I'll see you at your maintenance appointment. Um, so a few a few days passed by. She didn't book her maintenance appointment, but y'all, she got her hair done on March 29th. And y'all could tell, like, this really like because I've never gotten that's that's still to this day, knock on wood. That's the only charged back that i have ever gotten anything so i'm like she didn't book but lo and behold she got her hair done march 29th by april 29th y'all i got an email at five in the morning talking about X, Y, and Z disputed the charge because they have no knowledge of the charge excuse me no knowledge of the charge what do you mean no knowledge of the charge like she literally, this is our messages right here. She texted and this is when she booked her appointment. It said booked by client and everything else. I'm like, this is insane. This is insane. This is insane. So I'm like, ain't no effing way. Ain't no effing way. So then I'm like, okay. So I'm looking. But then I get to reading the email for some more for my processor. They say, yeah, the $825 will be deducted from your account until the dispute is over and if you win we will refund you the money back and if you lose then that will be the 825 dollars debited excuse me so she the 825 dollars is just gone and i had to wait y'all it made me wait up to it says it could take up to 90 days for this dispute when i tell y'all i was livid upset i was crying in the bed like crying in the bed because that never happened to me before. And y'all, honestly, I put my all. I put my all into doing this hair stuff, y'all. Like, I, especially when last year, like, I started getting a little bit more popular. And, like, I was just really into what I was doing. Loved it. I still love what I do. But it was just a different kind of grind, you know. Like, I was posting basically every day, almost every day. And... For somebody to dispute that charge, y'all, I was just so hurt and so upset because I thought we had a nice time. She had, she had, Her hair was done. It's not even the fact that she said she didn't like her hair. Something happened to her hair. It's the fact that she said she had no knowledge of the charge. And you know, y'all, like, clearly, y'all see, I have a son in, my, in the background. Like, I have a child. I had bills to pay um, and everything, y'all. And I was just so hurt, like... <laughs> I was so, so hurt. But lo and behold, a few months went past, like about a month and a half, two months went past, y'all. Um, And I lost the dispute. I lost the dispute. Now, I didn't understand why I lost the dispute then, but I understand why I lost the dispute now. Even though I sent our messages, I sent um when she booked her appointment and everything else. Because banks really don't care. Like, banks don't care. And you really have to dot your T's, mm. cross your T's and dot your I's. <laughs> you really have to do that, y'all. So now I have things in place like a real business should have in place. And y'all, if y'all have a business, 
even if you're just doing a service like you're doing services you're doing lashes you're doing hair you're doing nails anything you need these contracts and things in place so now i have an intake form and with my intake form y'all um it needs to be a little bit more thorough i'm gonna actually go and update that today um it needs to be thorough you need to be asking people their first and last name and making sure that um you have their first and last name taken down you need to make sure that instead of you saying you're taking a non-refundable deposit because in certain states it is illegal to take non-refundable deposits deposits have to be refunded um in certain states you need to look it up but instead of saying non-refundable deposit you need to say retainer fee sitting fee things like that because it is then acknowledging that it is a fee to hold your service and not necessarily a deposit because people say that banks see that and they're like oh well it's illegal for them to hold a deposit i'm refunding the money back back to my client or whatever so you need to make sure you're having the correct verbiage you need to make sure that you're being professional you need to make sure that in your intake form is saying I understand that by booking this appointment x y and z that I understand I have a non-refundable retainer fee um if you do not come to your appointment you know call no I understand that this sitting fee will be taken from my bank account and x y and z and if if I cannot debit it from your card, that you will be blocked from booking. You need to have all of these things acknowledged in making sure the client signs, quote unquote, which I use acuity so you, they can't really sign, but they can put their first and last name on there. Like, you know how when you fill out something and you like write your first and last name or you sign like that. Um, you need to make sure you have these things in place. And please excuse my ash again, y'all. I be rough in these sweets. Um, <laughs> I be working all day and I, it, it'd be rough out here. Um, but that's neither here nor there, y'all. Um, but we need to make sure that we have these things in place because even though we are small businesses and we may just be doing services at the time, we may not have products yet, we may not have online courses yet and things of that nature. It is still important that we operate as businesses first and hairstylists second. Just because we have policies and procedures in place does not mean that we're snobby. It does not mean that we're arrogant. It does not mean that at all. It just means that we have to protect ourselves in ways like Nordstrom protects themselves. Macy's protects themselves. Paul Mitchell protects themselves. Um, it's necessary because we are real people and we are humans too, y'all. And that's how we should be operating. I feel like a lot of people who have a trade, we weren't really taught. Or just people in general, we weren't really taught to have these necessary things in place like business insurance and trademarks and LLCs and intake forms and things like that. Because it's like, oh, you just do hair. Like, a lot of people don't take that seriously. Um, or you just do lashes. A lot of people don't take it seriously. They take it a little bit more seriously now than what they did. But it's still not gotten yet. It's still not gotten that we're not doing 20 heads a day to make chump change it's still not got that we have to pay taxes just like everybody else if you're doing what you're supposed to do um <laughs> that we have to pay taxes like everybody else we actually have to pay more taxes than everybody else because we are technically our own entity our own business it's not gotten that we still have to pay sweet rent and regular rent and we still have to be able to live a okay life like i'm not saying that we need to be buying lamborghinis and all this stuff but we want to have a decent life too and that's okay so we need to make sure we have these systems in place y'all and for the people that's out there scamming shame on you shame on you because you should not be scamming people if you do not have it it is okay your time will come save work a little bit harder and you will have it but do not be out here scamming people y'all do not, please, please, just do not be out here scamming people. And as y'all can see, her hair is done. Her hair looks so, so good. She was so happy. And that is why I love doing what I'm doing. That is the face. That is the reaction that I live for. I've had somebody cry when they left me before. Like, I really enjoy and love what I do um 
And that's why I made this YouTube channel because I enjoy and love what I do and I want to give people the knowledge. I want to give people the tea. I want to <laughs> I want people to understand what hair care is and what hair growth is and realize that it is achievable. Healthy hair is achievable for everybody. But on that note, I will see y'all next time.